Welcome back. This is the Grand Pageant in the Heavens. This is video number 13 and constellation group number 11 on the ecliptic. This, in this segment, we will see what we can learn from the Cancer constellation group. As a reminder, these things are things that I have learned from my own studies and are not official doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So Cancer is visible all night every December and January. Jupiter will be in Cancer from the 18th of October uh, 2025, will retrograde into Gemini for a couple of months and go through the 25th of June of 2027. So it seems very long, but it will be re retrograding first with Gemini and then with Leo. <clears throat> the name Cancer actually means rest assured. The two prophets assigned to Cancer from the pre-flood, it is Shem, whose name, me, um, whose name means name, renown, the standard of an empire. And of course, we are taught that Shem is Melchizedek, and that name means my God, my king is God, or my king is righteous. And of the 12 tribes, the one that seemed the best fit to me was Issachar, whose name means there is a there is reward. So a crab is a creature born of water, as we are likewise born of water and of the spirit. The ancient Egyptians naturally thought this constellation may have been a scarab that was worshipped by the Egyptians. Interestingly, both the crab and the scarab occasionally throw off their old, old shells for new ones. In the case of a scarab, it starts life in dark and filth to eventually emerge from its chrysalis as colorful, beautiful, and highly desired. This constellation actually signifies the gathering of God's people Israel, reborn and gathered into one sheep pen, corral, or family, whose shepherd is the ultimate king of Judah, Jesus the Christ. This interpretation is derived from the beehive cluster in Cancer, which is uh, seen as a manger for two donkeys, represented by two bright stars on either side of the cluster. This beehive or manger signifies Christ as the bread of life, while the two donkeys may symbolically remind us of our King, who is lowly, coming in righteousness and in peace. It may specifically signify the Messianic Jewish Jehovah returning to them in peace as the King who will do them good, as he sought to do in his mortal life among them. From Zechariah 9, verse 9, it says, quote, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt the foal of an ass, end quote. The known ancient star names and meanings are these. Presepe, the beak hive cluster in the star of stars in the middle of the constellation means the multitude, offspring, the young, the innumerable. Akubens means the sheltering, the place of retirement, the good rest. Ma a laf and al himarain mean the assembled thousands, the kids or lambs. The first decan of Cancer is Ursa Minor, the little bear or the little dipper. This sign is seen today as a bear, although in ancient times it was seen as a goat pen, with goats going in and out of it. According to the Gospel in the Stars by Joseph Seiss, Ursa Minor, or Ursa Major represents Christ's parable of the sheep and the goats given in Matthew 25, 31 through 43. 6, and the final harvest and division of humanity into groups of good sheep and evil goats at the end of the ages. He postulates that in this case, Ursa Minor signifies a flock of unruly goats, which signify rebellious people who were disobedient, whom Christ will reject. However, 
just going by the ancient star names, this interpretation may not be correct. We saw repenting goats in the Auriga constellation attached to Taurus. It may be that these are the repenting goats who turn to Christ before it is everlastingly too late. Just below Ursa Minor and Ursa Major stands the Christ figure of Arcturus, a decan of Virgo. The ancient star names in Ursa Minor are Dubhe, which means a fold, Kochab, which means awaiting the coming, Afer Kadain means the calves, the young, the redeemed, Algedi means the kid, the chosen of the flock. al Qaid means the assembled. And Arctos, or Arcs, means the stronghold of the saved. So these last four stars are talking about some group that has been redeemed and saved, not judged or destroyed. The second decan of Cancer is Ursa Major, also called the Big Bear or the Big Dipper. This was anciently called the Great Sheepfold. This sign is seen as a big bear today, though in ancient times it was seen as a sheep pen with sheep going into it. This signifies a spiritual sheep pen or congregation of good sheep that follow Christ the Good Shepherd and Lamb of God. It signifies the heavenly pasture where Christ is gathering his faithful flock. It also signifies the good sheep that will be gathered into a large fold to inherit everlasting life. Some of the ancient star names and meanings for um, uh, Ursa Major are Mizar, which means the guarded or enclosed place, Merach, which means the flock, Kabad al Asad, which means the multitude of the assembled, El Akola, which means the sheepfold. Al Kayyad, which means the assembled, Alioth, the you or mother, El Kafra, which means the protected, the covered, the redeemed, Dubha Lachar, which means the latter herd or flock. So definite reference to the last days. The third decan of Cancer is called Argo the ship, also called Karina. Argo once included the bright star Canopus and the star cluster called the Southern Pleiades, which are now part of the constellation uh, Carina near Can Canis Major in the Southern Hemisphere. Argo could signify the fishing boats of Christ's apostles, who were fishers of men. As such, those who follow in their footsteps are still catching many schools full of faithful fish, even though Satan still seeks, seeks to sink the ship so that everyone aboard will perish. The many saints who work with Christ to defeat Satan are represented by Pisces and Piscis Australis. These heavenly fishes signify the cargo of Argo, huge schools of fishes that will ultimately be converted to Christ and come to worship him. Elder Ballard has made many references to the good ship Zion, which this ship may be. So some of the ancient star names of, uh, of Argo are Canopus, uh, which means the possession of him who cometh. Interesting to note that the burial canopic jars of ancient Egypt come from this star name. In death, the Egyptians were symbolically giving their heart, mind, and bowels to God. Sephina means the multitudinous good, the very abundance. Tureus means the firm possession in hand. Asmediska means the travelers released. And so Hail means what was desired. The analogy being that the people referenced have become a Zion people, and the Lord has saved them and provided them with safety and gathered them into his fold. And I have wondered if this might also be indicating the return of the ten tribes, the return of Enoch Zion, and uh, many other gatherings. So taken all together, the Cancer Constellation Group could be teaching 
all of the righteous of all peoples and nations will be gathered together in one. They will be gathered into sheepfolds and goat enclosures, large and small. They will be a Zion people of one heart and one mind with the Lord. They will gather unto the Lord a mighty harvest of souls. They may even include the return of the ten tribes in Enoch Zion. So this concludes this section. Thank you again for watching. The next segment we will see with the constellation group of Leo, which is the final constellation group of the ecliptic might possibly be saying.